As the Calgary Flames wind down the 2023-24 NHL season, they're willing to give different people different opportunities. And as they fall further and further out of playoff contention, that means that some of the younger guys are given the opportunity to gain some very valuable NHL experience. The Flames know this, so they're making some moves and have signed a scorer out of college. Welcome to Flames Digest. I'm Mark Griffith. If you're new around here, you love the Flames, make sure you subscribe because over 83% of the people watching are not subscribed. So if you want to stay up to date on all the latest news, updates, reports, and rumors on the Calgary Flames, then make sure you stick around and join the fastest growing community of Flames fans on the internet. But like I said, the season in terms of going for the playoffs might be kind of finished now, especially after last night, which we will get into later in this video. But that doesn't mean the Flames are done making moves at all. As, like I said, they have signed a scorer. Now, it isn't exactly like, you know, when Minnesota signed Kaprizov or anything like that, but it's a guy who can pot the puck a little bit. It's not like some of the guys they acquired at the deadline who were mostly defensemen, Grushnikov, Miramanov, Okochuk, and others. No, this is more of a score straight out of college as his college days have ended now. And it is the Flames have signed forward Sam Morton to a one-year two-way contract with an AAV of 950k per season. So Morton comes out of Minnesota State University where he had a pretty decent season. And, you know, we'll... we'll We'll get into more about him in a second here, but it's good to see that the Flames are signing some forwards because we have seen teams do this, you know, close to the end of seasons when guys are having either really good seasons in college hockey or their college hockey careers are coming to an end. I mean, look what the Leafs did last year with Matthew Nyes. They brought him in pretty much right before the playoffs. He got a little bit of NHL experience and has played essentially every single game since, including the playoffs last year. Morton could be one of those guys as well. You think of the Boston Bruins. They did that with Charlie McAvoy back in the 2017 season. He came out of Boston University and instantly slotted into the lineup right beside Zdeno Ochara. And once again, he has also stayed in the Boston lineup for pretty much that entire duration since. Morton, he's not exactly a Nyes or a McAvoy, but let's just get into the facts about him here. Why don't we? So, he is 24 years old, so he's not exactly a young buck. I mean, he's obviously still young, but he's not, he didn't just start college, we'll put it that way. Um, he's got a very, you know, I'd say bog standard height and weight here. Um, could definitely afford to put on a few pounds. A left shot as well, after the Flames have obviously lost a couple lefties. But, you know what, he is Young, I know he's American, which turns a lot of people off when it comes to the Flames, but he's a young guy and he can score. Is he going to come into the Flames lineup anytime soon? Maybe, maybe not. I mean, it was actually funny. The Flames tried to sign him to a one-year ELC. The NHL rejected this because he's too old. He will be 25 before next season starts, which is the cutoff. So they did have to sign him, as you saw, to that two-way contract between the AHL and the NHL. But we've seen his facts. Now let's get into some of his stats. So he's had a bit of a college career. Like I said, he was at Minnesota State. And you know what? This season, very good. 24 goals in 37 games. The guy knows how to put the puck past the red line. He can put the puck in the net. And you know what? Overall, he hasn't played a load of hockey down in the NCAA. Um, he's been there for a long time. You see Union College up there at the top. But he definitely knows how to score. He's proven that he can produce and it's not a bad signing for the Flames. They do want, you know, some younger guys, not super young because they obviously have a million draft picks coming up um, and those guys will be very young. But a bunch of a bunch of younger guys are coming into the organization. So this one's a little bit older and that's a good thing because you know what? The Flames always seem to pluck good guys from the Wranglers. Um, we've seen it over the past few years. Think back to Manjapani, you know, and how he came and just started scoring again. Like last year, he had 35 goals. I think a lot of people forget that with maybe the lack of goals this year. But the Flames always pick up guys from, you know, other teams or from college and that kind of thing and then develop them and they do become NHL players. Do they ever become huge stars? That's a little bit rarer. I think the Flames are more hoping for that in a trade, maybe this offseason for Markstrom or obviously from the next couple drafts here where they do have first round picks and second round picks. But either way, Sam Morton, 
not a bad signing at all. Bit of a sneaky signing. I, I don't think a lot of people saw it coming or even have really heard about it. This happened yesterday um, before the Washington game. But either way, not a bad signing at all. And it's never a bad thing to have one too many scorers down in the minors. That can always come up and play at the NHL level. Now, this video is about making moves. There is another move made. Peltz has been sent down to the Wranglers. And I know a lot of fans are disappointed in that because he has had a bit of a rough go this year. Obviously, he got that shoulder injury in the second game of the preseason against Seattle. Really battled his way back and was able to come back to the Flames after the All-Star break. But, I mean, here's the official transaction itself. The Flames have assigned Jacob Peltier to the Calgary Wranglers. And you know what? It's a, it's a good thing, I think, for Peltier because... He wasn't exactly producing at a high level this year. He has one goal and three points in his NHL game so far this year. But I, he does need minutes. He needs minutes in order to develop and really, you know, regain that kind of dog-like approach he had at chasing down the puck, getting steals, and just being an absolute influence for the Flames in the offensive zone. So he wasn't playing last game, and there's no point in keeping him as an extra forward. He needs to get minutes, more experience. Send him down to the AHL. The Wranglers, they're kind of fighting for positioning in the uh, Pacific Division of the AHL right now. I think they'll make the playoffs for sure because seven teams make it from the division. So they're in seventh right now, but eighth is way below them. But they are kind of battling with some of those other teams right now. I think they play Bakersfield the next couple days, which will be huge for the standings there. And Pelche can help them out a lot. He's shown that he can score. Maybe not quite at the NHL level yet, but he's done it at the AHL level, obviously back in the queue back in the day. So this is actually a very good thing for Pelche to ensure that he is still playing good hockey, playing hard hockey, and getting important minutes for his development so that he can be the player the Flames need him to be, whether that's hopefully next season or definitely in the future. We know how much he loves playing with his dad, Huberto, so hopefully he can get back to a point where he is producing and just playing very, very good hockey. His style of hockey, which is what the Flames love and what the Flames need. There's no point in risking more injury up at the NHL level or anything like that. Obviously, the Flames have players who have come back like Greer or are coming back soon like Connor Zary. So there's no point in keeping Pelche just as an extra forward that practices with the Flames. Might as well send him down to the Wranglers. It's great for the Wranglers, and it's great for Pelche. Hopefully this move will pay dividends for them both. The last thing we'll look at in this video is last night's game. Now, I know it's not exactly a fun one to talk about. It's never amazing to go over a loss. But you know what? Even though the Flames did lose, it was fun watching Ovechkin. I mean, it's not always fun watching him score against your team. But no matter what, it's cool watching Ovechkin score. He broke some records. Um, of 20 goal seasons in a row to start a career. Congratulations to him. But the Flames did end up losing 5-2. And the big problem here was not necessarily defense or goaltending. Um, I do feel bad for Wolf. It's not like any of those were super softies, but I did feel bad when he was giving up some goals there. But the main problem for the Flames is their special teams right now. The power play is abysmal. As much as I love Mark Savard, and I'm glad the Flames brought him in to try and switch it up, it just hasn't happened this year. Now, I know the Flames don't have the most firepower in terms of the power play on either the first unit or the second unit, but they really got to get something going here. No power play goals again last night, and the penalty kill, I know it's against Ovechkin, and he has what seems like a thousand power play goals in his career, but the penalty kill, with Tanev gone, with Hannafin gone, we knew it wasn't going to be as good, but it has been very very shaky lately and special teams is what lost the flames that game last night at no point did they really look like the better team in that game either which is too bad but as the flames get closer to the end of the season at least they can shake things up as much as they want try out new things bring in different players to play i know they've been doing a bit of a carousel with the defensemen and obviously the forwards with injuries and such and then obviously the goalie carousel is still the talk of the town but the flames have a big break now and they can decide what they want to do before Saturday's game in Vancouver, which should be hopefully a very, very fun one, regardless of who the Flames put out. But no matter what, I'm glad the Flames are still trying different things out and making moves, even though the playoffs are looking more and more bleak as each day goes on. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe if you like what you saw here today, and make sure you have a fantastic rest of your day.